Hello, my name is Clemency. I'm Principal Investigator with the Bimini Shark Lab. And today we're going to talk a bit about sensory ecology, a little bit about a shark's sense of hearing, and then also about the anthropogenic disturbance research we're doing at the moment with the juvenile lemon sharks. So to begin with, when we talk about sensory ecology, we're primarily talking about um, the signals that exist within an environment, the sensory systems that animals have in order to perceive these signals, and then the way that these signal perceptions are translated into behavior types. So as humans, the way in which we um, interpret the environment around us um, is determined by the five sensory systems that we possess and their relative sensitivities. So this is our sense of touch, our sense of taste, our sense of smell, our sense of hearing, and our sense of vision. So two animals that exist within exactly the same environment can perceive it completely differently just based on the sensory systems that they themselves possess. Now, underwater, many of these sensory systems are the same. However, the way in which signals propagate in these systems can be slightly different. So, for example, sound can travel twice as fast um, in an underwater environment than it can using air as the medium. Now, sharks have the same five sensory systems that we do, um, but they also do have that one additional sense. So they also have the ability to detect electric signals. This is what we call electroreception. Last week, we actually featured an electroreception specialist in the Great Hammerhead. So they're great cephalofoil with the high density of electroreceptors underneath enables them to almost move like a metal detector and detect electric signals from animals buried under the sediment. And that actually allows them to be such effective predators of animals such as stingrays. Now today we're primarily going to talk about sound and hearing, which probably isn't the first sense you think about when you think about sharks. Um, one of the first questions I often get asked is, where are your shark's ears? Um, and they do actually have two. They have paired inner ears, not that different to us, but they don't have an external structure like we do. So if you do want to see where a shark's ears are, they're very small, usually very hard to locate, but they will be just above the eyes on the top of the head, with very small pore-like openings, not too dissimilar to how the ampullae of Lorenzini canals look on the underside of a shark's snout. But our understanding of how sharks perceive sound and how they respond to it is quite lacking. Um, initially, it began with the study to see if sound could be used as a repellent in sharks. So in the 60s and 70s, it was determined that very loud, sudden onsets of noise were very effective repellents of sharks. Sharks will move away from a sound source um, if that's its nature. However, if you have a very low frequency, pulsating, slower onset of noise, then sharks actually will be attracted to it. So we see different behavior types um, to different types of sound. More recently, a great paper that came out just last year in 2019 that was concerning the effect of underwater, behave, underwater sound on shark behaviour found that the behavioural response also varies between species and again that the type of response um, is determined by the nature of the signal itself. So whether that signal was artificial or predatory um, depended, um, resulted in a different behavioural outcome. But now, in light of how much introduced noise there is in the oceans, we should probably also consider if that's going to impact shark behaviour. So this is a concept that has been explored in other systems. Um, so for example, in coral reefs, we know that an increase in boat traffic noise can lead to increased mortality rates. It can mask imp important communication signals and it can even increase the risk of predation. So while sharks don't make noise and they don't use noise necessarily to communicate with each other, it doesn't mean that noise and sound don't emit important signals. So the research into anthropogenic noise impact is growing in pace. Um, there's more attention than ever looking into different types of oceanic pollution of which sound is one. However, there is a significant lack of research that's focusing specifically on sharks. Now, Bimini represents a great opportunity to further investigate this. Um, Bimini's lagoon is a high noise habitat. We have mangroves that are used by animals to create a huge amount of noise. If you've ever snorkeled around a mangrove, um, it's very easy to tell that you're there by um, the, the sounds that you will hear. Um, and they're highly utilized by lemon sharks um, and also using le lemon sharks at a very important point in their life history when they're using it as a nursery and they really need to be protected um, from large predators. So our work is now looking at if these noisy environments might provide cues for space use, for orientation and other similar behaviors. And similarly, we're able to see if the introduction of artificial noises might interrupt those behaviors, change their space use and their physiology. So we're increasingly seeing encroachment into the marine environment through things like higher boat traffic and construction on coastlines. So understanding how sound can change natural behaviours is really key to being able to provide information to governments and inform legislation on how to protect key habitats in the interests of animals and humans alike. 
So later this week, we'll be sharing a pit special video where we talk about the lemon sharks of Bimini and what we've learned about them so far and how um, other ways in which we're seeing humans change their existence. But in the meantime, if you have any questions specifically about what we spoke about today, please send them in for our live Q&A. You can also contact me through social media or through my email. I'm always happy to chat about sharks. So thank you for listening and I hope you found out something interesting today. Bye-bye.